legitimately some exciting players in this fold. There have been exciting developments this spring. It's such a chasm, though, between that and contention. Good morning to you. Good Wednesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins in the same place that you found this. Pirates had the day off yesterday in Bradenton. Those become known as the blessed days off down there. They only get a couple each spring. And when I say that, it's not just that there's no game. There's no grapefruit league. It's that there's no nothing. They tell you to just shut down, tune out. And other than the minor league complex, there's not even any activity. That's that's a really, really cool thing for those guys. Trust me, they really value this. But it also offers us, me and you, a chance to go over kind of the excitement that's happened. And then I don't want to say to temper it because that just sounds kind of wet blanket ish. And that's definitely not my motivation here. But to try to piece it all together and see what it means, because ultimately all that's relevant out of multiple O'Neill crews, lunar blasts and Jared Jones throwing, you know, a hundred miles an hour and all this other stuff that has everyone so stoked is whether or not they can beat the Cardinals and the Brewers and the Cubs and the Reds. That's that's what I'm getting at here. How do you put it all together into a team that consistently produces more runs than the other guys do? Beginning with the lineup, I would say that there's a lot to like about what's there potentially, certainly in the top three, with O'Neill Cruz, Brian Reynolds, Brian Hayes. And then from there, you start getting into a, well, can Rowdy Telez really be your cleanup guy? Because you'd better have a cleanup guy. Is Andrew McCutcheon your five? How does this thing get lengthened? Can Jack Sawinski be more productive than someone that you have to bury at six or seven and just hope that Jack hits a bunch of solo home runs? What's going to happen with Henry Davis? Are they even going to start him out in the majors? Remember, that has not been declared yet. I'm pretty sure it's been decided, but it hasn't been declared. Is Leo Verpaguero someone who has breakout potential? Or is he going to be just another dude? Or is he even the one who's going to start at second base? Could that be Jared Triolo, who seems to have a higher floor, if not a higher ceiling? Michael A. Taylor certainly seems to profile as your number nine, and that's been a pretty common assignment now throughout Major League Baseball, having your center fielder who can track down everything but is kind of light with the bat, gets at nine. Does that line up overall feel like a contending line? You know, it, it, there's possibilities, but there's also too many question marks. You see what I'm saying? I mean, Cruz can hit them all 500, 600 feet, and it's not going to lengthen the lineup. The rotation's seen in its own way some shoring up over the past couple of weeks. Domingo Herman, even though he was signed to a minor league deal with a spring invite, I, I'm going to say again that I believe that was more symbolic or more to send a message to him that he's got to have to earn everything that he gets. There is no way that dude is not in this rotation. Okay. It might not be at the very, very beginning, but there's no way with the stuff that he has and and the background that he has, that he'll be taking a backseat to some of what's already in there. So you've got Mitch Keller. I'm going to throw Herman in right now. Martin Perez, you've got Marco Gonzalez, who's actually come along of late. His main issue is going to be health. Anytime you have a nerve injury, that's pretty scary stuff for a pitcher. And then, as I've been insisting all along, one of those three backward step kids, I, I've i felt has to have the number five spot, has to earn one of these spots. And to me, that's been Luis Ortiz. Now, you still have to keep Rowanzi Contreras. You have to keep him, whether it's as a long relief guy or whatever. You can't let him walk. If he walks, he's going to get fixed somewhere else. 
So here are two. The rotation, it, it has something there. And I'm not even mentioning Paul Skeens, who's not going to take long in the minors. He just can't. They can super two or whatever, but he's still going to be up. Jared Jones, who Derek Shelton uh, claims is still in the running for a spot. He's got options. There's no reason for him to be here now from that standpoint, from a roster management standpoint. And anyone who follows the Pirates knows that's always going to be, if not the top priority, then one of the top priorities. So here, too, you have a couple of things that you really like, and you're worried about lengthening it out. And it's a legit worry. The bullpen, which might have the best pedigree of any of these facets, uh, has one big question mark in that David Bednar has been slowed down significantly this spring by the lat injury. But let's presume that that's not going to be something that's super crazy long term for him. And you've got one of the better closers in the game. You've got one of the more explosive closers in the history of the game now in support in a role as Chapman. You've got Colin Holderman. You've, <laughs> you've got people. Okay, Carmen Lajinski is going to be a big part of this bullpen too. Don't forget about him. That would be a big mistake. They come at you. This was something that Bednar had mentioned to me a couple of weeks ago down there. They come at you from so many different angles, so many different types of pitches, so many different arm slots. It's kind of stuff that baseball geeks like these guys really, really get into where they study each other's mechanics and everything. But he's right. And that's a tough, tough thing for a lineup to face, especially when your manager has the ability to mix and match late in close games, they're the most complete as I see it, uh, especially if Ryan Barucki can have a second consecutive year as, a, as an effective lefty. I mean, you always want to have one of those out there. Barucki was that in an understated way in 2023. So it's all there. They didn't really uh, push all their chips in, to say the least. And especially if you look at those chips as money. But there's enough there where you say, all right, if all of these other variables go at least reasonably well or balance out or aren't catastrophes, the floor is higher. The ceiling still is up there. But, but you know, that's when all the intangibles and everything else has to come into play. Gotta win games when we come back, J1Q. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern that's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800 degree stone, and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Today's J1Q comes from Dennis, who asks, DK O'Neill Cruz is effortless. Opposite field power is amazing. The bat is his magic wand. But man, I can't help but think he's destined to play right field. It's the best way to get him as many at-bats as possible, forestalling fatigue and injury. And you know, all I want to say back, Dennis, is, no, Dennis, you're wrong. No, Dennis, you're, you're just thinking in stereotypes. Just because he's tall doesn't mean he can't play short. He's got all kinds of gifts, uh, including, you know, that gun and he's actually pretty good defensively. It won't always look super pretty. He's not going to uh, floor you with highlight plays the way, you know, like a Jack Wilson would. But what he will do is he will use all of those long limbs to cover a lot more ground than a smaller shortstop might. But then you bring up other points. You bring up... You know, being out in right field and less wear and tear on the body. You still get usage of that gun. 
you still get usage out of all that range and the speed and everything else. And then there's the health factor. And then there's putting all the emphasis in on that offense. And I, I kind of like it. And I'm whispering here because I wouldn't want him to hear it. Okay. He really, really, really sees himself as a shortstop. He's really poured his heart into the position. And I respect that Ben Charrington and his staff have gone along with that. I don't know that they wouldn't agree with you, Dennis. But they also understand that they've got themselves a special talent here. They've got themselves a special personality. They've got someone who can be a superstar right here in their uniform. And the last thing they're going to do is pull the plug on something that he believes in, especially, especially after the season that he just went through, especially after that. Because the last thing that you want to plant in somebody's head, and I think this applies to life after any kind of major injury or illness, is a, uh, well, you can't do this now mentality. We don't want you doing this anymore. You're done with that. And I think any of you who've experienced any kind of injury or illness that's been debilitating for any period of time can identify with what I'm saying, where you just go, whoa, hang on a second. What are you saying here? I can do that. I can definitely do that. And to have Cruz then show up this spring as arguably the single best performer at any position in the entire sport, which it's a small sample size, but let's just go with it. Then, and then you say at the end of it, nah, nah, let's just, let's just, let's just be careful here. You can't do that. Cruz is all about his ceiling and you can't take away any component of that ceiling. I think it's similar in a way to Derek Shelton putting him at leadoff. I, I, look, I, I don't want a guy that looks to me like he can hit a home run every six, seven at bats hitting a bunch of solo shots. But the fact the data supports this is that he's more comfortable. He's more himself when he's at leadoff. Okay, then, kid. Hit leadoff. We'll structure the eight and nine slots around you. We'll try to make sure that there are people on the second and the third and the fourth time that you're up. But let him play. You know, that's I, I really think it's not much more complicated than that. Let him play. Let him be his best self because his best self is wow. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. And we're going to do another one of these tomorrow. 